Welcome to the Formatting Academic Papers Workshop, presented by the Writing Center at Trident Technical College. We hope you find this information helpful as you write and format your assignments in MLA and APA styles. The formatting style of your paper, or how you present your information, depends upon your field of study. Although there are many different formatting styles, for most college classes, you will use either the MLA or APA style. Always read your assignment directions carefully so that you know which style to use. The MLA style is mainly used in English, foreign language, and humanities courses. The first page will include your name, your professor or instructor's name, the course title, and the date in the upper left-hand corner. Every page will include your last name and the page number in the upper right-hand corner. You will also include in-text citations. More information on that on later slides. All sources will be listed on the last page, which is called the Works Cited page. There are many resources you can access to help you learn how to use the MLA style. You can use the Little Seagull Handbook, or you can go to the websites for Trident Text Writing Center or the Purdue OWL website. So what exactly does it mean to include in-text citations? This means whenever you are including information in your paper from a source other than yourself, you must acknowledge where it came from. It does not matter if you quote the information directly, if you summarize the information, or if you paraphrase or put it in your own words. In every case, you must let the reader know who originally said or wrote the information. First, let's talk about how you introduce that information in your paper. Do not just drop your information into the paper without some context. Instead, you introduce it. One way to do that is by sharing the author's name and their profession in the sentence. For example, you might say, Professor and textbook editor Susan Smith argues that college students need to spend more time on citations. Note that instead of saying Susan Smith says, I used one of the stronger verbs listed here. These signal verbs are often found in academic papers because they provide deeper meaning. They let the reader know if the source agrees with an idea, responds to a question, or emphasizes a result. In MLA format, these verbs are written in the present tense. Another way you can cite your source is by including the author's name at the end of the sentence within the parentheses. As you can see here, you must also include the page number of the source where the specific information can be found. If you have two authors, you will include both names. If three or more authors are responsible for a source, you will just include the name of the first author followed by the abbreviation et al. This is Latin for and others. In some cases, you may have a source that does not have an author listed. In this case, the in-text citation will be the title of the article. If the article is incredibly long, you may shorten it to the first three or four words. As you can imagine, there are many different types of in-text citations. When you are writing a literary analysis essay, you will need to include some additional information for novels, plays, and poems. For novels, you will include the chapter and page number. For plays, you will provide the act, scene, and line numbers. If you are citing a poem, there are two different models. If the poem is divided into parts and lines, be sure to indicate both. If the poem only has line numbers, you will list the number and the word line, but only for the first reference. Thereafter, it's just the line number itself. As I mentioned previously, 
For websites, list whatever information you have, the author or the name of the article or the web page. For videos, be sure to include the author's name. If you are referencing a specific quote or part from a video, you might also include the time that that quote appears. When you are writing academic essays in MLA format, you will always include a works cited page at the end of your essay. On this page, you will list all of the sources you used in your research. As you are collecting your sources, be sure to write down or save the information that relates to the core elements that are listed on this slide. Not every source will have each of these pieces, but if the source has it, you must list it. Be sure to record the author or authors, the title of the source, and the title of the container. This is the term we use for the larger work in which the source is found. You will also include any editors, translators, or contributors, the edition or version number, the volume and issue numbers, the publisher, the date of publication, and finally the location of the source. Sometimes this is the page numbers within an academic journal. Other times it is the DOI or digital object identifier within a database. It finally could be the URL for a particular page on a website. Again, your source may not have all of these elements, but be sure to record them if you have them. Now, let's look at the order and format in which that information appears on your works cited page. As you can see on the slide, it is important to know what type of source you have because that determines the format of the information on your works cited page. A physical book or a newspaper article is quite easy to cite, while an online journal, ar journal article like the Gleckman source listed here requires more of those core elements to be listed. Pay close attention to which words are capitalized, which are written in normal script, and which are italicized. Also, note where you need to include commas or periods. Then, once you have all of your sources listed, be sure to place them in alphabetical order by the last name of the author. Use the hanging indent feature on your word processing software to create the proper format. Finally, be sure the words works cited are centered on the top of the page. On this slide, notice that the first source listed does not have an author. In this case, the article name is listed first. Notice how for the online video, you might have an author and a person or organization that uploads the information to the platform, in this case, YouTube. Finally, the last source listed here, a government report, does not have the name of a person listed as the author. In this case, the author is the United States, since the publication was produced by a specific governmental department. If you are writing a paper in APA style, you will need to have a title page, which includes the title of your paper, your name, the name of the college, and a running head. On subsequent pages, you will include the running head and the page number. Sometimes instructors will ask for specific features like an abstract, headings, or subheadings but all papers will have a references page. In APA style, your in-text citations look just a little bit different from those that are written in MLA style. In APA style, you will include the name of the source's author and the year of publication. If your source has multiple authors, you will list all of them in your first in-text citation. Then, in future citations, you will list the first author followed by et al. and the date. If you are citing a source that does not have an author, 
you will include the name of the website article or website name and the date. Academic papers written in APA format will have a references page at the end. This page will list every source cited in your paper. Do not include a source on your references page if you have not cited the source directly in the text. While the references page lists the same information found on a work cited page, there are a few stylistic differences, specifically as it relates to dates, titles, and the use of the DOI or URL. A great resource for the most up-to-date information on formatting in APA style is the APA style blog. Finally, be sure the word references is centered at the top of your references page. The Writing Center at Trident Technical College is available for all students free of charge. You may stop by for in-person tutoring during our office hours, or you may reach us online through our talk chat feature or email. Consult our webpage for our hours of operation and links to helpful handouts. Please know that our mission is to help you become a confident, skilled writer. Thank you for taking the time to watch this workshop.